Well, good morning to you all and welcome to worship here at Woking this morning, whether you're here or whether you're worshipping with us at home online. I apologise for all the chairs. We, somebody went a bit over the top, didn't they? Hence, there are a huge number of chairs and you're all very spaced out. Um, but that doesn't matter. We can, we can cope with that. Some are more spaced out than others. But it's good to be here with you. We all had a lesson at band practice the other night on how to play that tune correctly. Some of us have been playing it incorrectly for the last 45 years. Or so. Was it right this morning? No? <laughs> That's the trouble when you've done things a certain way since time began, you can't get it right. Can you sort out the culprit? Okay, we'll, we'll sort them out in time. It wasn't me, because I'm here. I didn't, I didn't play intentionally in case I got asked to leave, because it was wrong. A couple of important announcements before we really get down to worship this morning. Next week is our Harvest Festival, so come along and celebrate Harvest with us. It's not going to be the usual harvest display because sometimes you sort of run out of ideas of what to do with it and the days of harvest auctions of fruit and veg are long gone aren't they so we we've, we've had a bit of a distress signal um, from major edwina cousins who i gather you know very well and um, she's put out a distress call for the life houses that she is chaplain at for shampoo shower gel and deodorant for men and ladies okay <coughs> men and ladies um really it's only shampoo shower gel and deodorant that they need but i'm sure that should you bring anything else it's not going to be turned down is it <laughs> so that's that so harvest next week if you'd like to bring your gifts on sunday you can do or if not there will be tables and a display out here probably from sometime on thursday so if you want to drop it in then that will be really kind of you and another important announcement you know that we have the friary band friary band on the 13th of november we're only going to be able to accommodate about 100 people because of the restrictions and the friary band are going to have a good few tickets by the sound of it. So if you would like to come on that occasion, you're really going to get need to get in and get your ticket. I think um, some of the band members will have tickets, will they? Well, I'm to that. You will encourage that. But if not, David's got them apparently. <laughs> <laughs> He'll encourage the bandsmen to take some tickets. So please put your order in for the tickets, otherwise you may live over the road and think I need to go to the army tonight, but if you're number 101, then you may well be disappointed. So, so get in as early as you can for your tickets for the Friary Band on Saturday the 13th of November. And now we will continue with our worship and we're going to turn if you use a songbook to song number 973 an absolute golden oldie can you remember the days of the salvation meeting in the evening the holiness meeting in the morning well we've got a bit you have to do sort of all in the one in most places these days and the praise meeting from sunday afternoon as well i guess so um, we're, we're going to have a, a bit of a salvation meeting this morning and we're going to sing this song, Salvation is our motto, salvation is our song and round the wide, wide world we'll send the cry along. I invite you to stand and sing and um, we'll do our best to raise our voices as we sing this. <clears throat>
very much. Please take your seats. Isn't it a good job that he takes sinners of every kind? Otherwise, you and I wouldn't be here. But because the Lord takes anybody who accepts him into their life, then we're privileged that he has taken us. If you use a songbook, we're going to turn to song number 353. If not, the words will come up on the screen. I don't know what sort of um, week you've had this week, whether you've been busy, whether you've been away on your holidays, relaxing. But today is World Mental Health Day. Some of us probably listened to the Salvation Army service on Radio 4 this morning where the major there who was speaking is a, a psychotherapist um, and a, a counsellor. And so many people in our world these days suffer from mental health or live with mental health problems. And sometimes you just sort of wonder to yourself, is it because of the pace of life? Is it because our minds never have any rest um, from technology and emails and all those things that bombard us the whole of our lives? Maybe we just don't take time out to be still. David and I yesterday took some time out and we sat on a beach. Um, the one thing we miss about living here, and I love you all, but I wish I lived at the seaside. I really, really miss those times when you can walk down to the seafront, cycle along the seafront, sit on the beach. And yesterday, um, we did that for a little while in the sunshine at East Wittering and the tide was coming in and, and it was just so lovely just to sit there and take it in and be still. So we're going to sing this lovely little song just now. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. And just, just sit and take in. Listen if you don't want to. But just come quietly before the Lord. And maybe let him heal your soul. Because you're traumatized. You're anxious. You're worried about what the future holds.
Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we're grateful that we find ourselves in your house. I'm sure that most of us cannot think of anywhere else that um, we would rather be today than here, in your house with your people, people who love you, people who you love, and people who just want to join together to worship you today. And we have just sung that you are a great and a mighty God and you can heal and you can cleanse. And today on this World Mental Health Day, we do indeed bring to you all those people who have had to learn to live with mental illness. Some of us have seen firsthand the effects that it can have on so many people when they're their minds are troubled, their, their health is traumatised and, and it's just so difficult. Maybe sometimes just to get out of bed and to put one foot in front of the other. And if we've not walked in, in those person's shoes, we cannot begin to imagine how difficult life can be. So we thank you for organisations like our own Salvation Army Counselling Service, our counsellors, those who can give help those who can give guidance, those who can just lend a listening ear. And today, for all those people, some who are known to us, we pray that you will maybe help them to feel extra, especially close to you today, because they will be aware of the significance of this day and what it means. And they will be aware that so many of us are bringing them to mind and picturing them as we bring them to you. Just now we pray for them and we pray for each other, those who perhaps are too elderly to join with us in worship, those who don't feel well, those who are sad and lonely because they've recently been bereaved of their life's partner. We pray that you'll be especially close to them these days. We thank you for each other. We thank you for our uniqueness. We thank you for the gifts that we have in our own lives. Maybe we just look at ourselves sometimes and think, gosh, why did you choose me to follow you? Because we feel insignificant. And sometimes we just feel that maybe there's, there's not much that we can do. But there really is. Because we can talk to other people. We can pray for other people. We can do back room jobs even if we're not up front people. So we thank you for each other, for every member of our core family, from the youngest to the oldest. We thank you for each other. And for those today who perhaps are struggling with some, some issue in their life that maybe the rest of us have no knowledge about, we ask, Lord, that you will just be with those people who need you in a very, very special way. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us as we worship you today, that your Holy Spirit will fall on us, that your name will be glorified and lifted high. Hear and answer prayer, we pray. And we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And amen. We're going to sing again now, which a song which um, is a song of testimony, really. A song that says, would you know why I love Jesus? Why he is so dear to me? It is because my blessed Saviour from my sins has ransomed me. And we're going to sing it to one of my all-time favourite tunes. But after we've um, sung the first verse, I wonder... If there is someone here this morning who would like to share with us why they love Jesus. We haven't had a time of testimony in the meeting for a good few weeks. I don't know why. That's probably our omission. Um, but it's time that um, 
that we resurrected that, I think. So we'll sing the first verse in the chorus, and then if somebody would like to tell us why they love Jesus, we have got all the time in the world. We've got nowhere else to go today, so it doesn't matter how long we stay, does it? Thank you. Would you... Trust in Jesus, and he will see you through. Thank you very much, Eric. And we thank the Lord that you went to that children's camp that time. Otherwise, who knows what might have happened. We're going to sing the next verse, and then is there anybody else? If you, um, Somebody once said to me once that if testimony time comes in the meeting and you sit there and your heart feels as though it's going to pound out of your chest, that's probably an indication. And it is absolutely right because I've had it happen. So if you feel as though your heart is going to bound through your chest wall and you feel a bit nervous, then that's probably an indication that it should be you. Let's sing verse 2.
Thank you very much, Dennis, for that um, really personal testimony. We'll sing verses um, four and five, and we'll just leave um, a, a few brief moments so that nobody else feels disappointed. You may feel very relieved, actually. But we'll sing verse four and five, and then we'll see if there's anybody else before we continue a little bit further. Thank you. Would Anybody else be disappointed if they don't get the chance? Okay, thank you very much to those of you who have said why you love Jesus this morning. Now we're going to listen to our scripture reading and Peter is going to bring our reading to us this morning. He likes to make a grand entrance. When Margaret asked me to read the scripture, I thought it was because of my magnetic personality. <laughs> then she explained the story of Zacchaeus, and she wanted a very little man to read it. <laughs> and they don't come any smaller. So it's um, Luke chapter 19, and it's pages 1053, if you have the core Bible. Jesus entered to Jer Jericho, and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Come down immediately, I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Amen.
Thank you, Peter. And we'll consider that scripture in a while. Sometimes it's good to know who you can say things to without causing offence. And Peter laughed his head off on the phone at 10 o'clock this morning when I explained. He'd never been met with such a request ever before, apparently, for being a very little man. We're all very little people, aren't we? But we serve a great big God. I wasn't sure whether to use this song or not today, and I'm still not totally sure. But I think we might go with it anyway. And I've been told that Matt and Sam, when you were little boys, this used to be one of your favourites, which is a long time ago. If you really want to join in and do the actions, you can do, or you can just sit and listen. And Vicky, if it goes on and on, which it is want to do, just go like that and cut it off. Okay, okay. Um, I think in every meeting that I've ever used this in before, we've had children. We've got Elliot. Get him singing. He's crawling around now. His little voice can be heard, and it's lovely to have him. But we're going to sing this song, Our God, or we're going to watch it, whichever you want. Our God is a great big God. You can stand, you can do the actions. Feel free, I'm in, up here in full view, so I'll think carefully. Okay, let's sing or listen. Our God is a great big God. <clears throat> Because at some places, if there were not children in the meeting, you would have been looking a right wally up here if you'd have sung that. Well, we are, we are. So that was good, and um, I'm not disappointed or aghast that it fell flat whatsoever. That was lovely. Sometimes it's good to remind ourselves that we're very little and insignificant, but we serve a God who is a great, big God. So thank you for that. We're going to sort of go from the ridiculous to the sublime now. 
and we're going to listen to the contribution from the band. And they're going to play two little pieces of music. There is a Redeemer. And I can't think what the other one is off the top of my head.
Thank you very much. It's good to have um, the members of the band all back, whether we're doing right or whether we're not. We're doing our best and we're trying to keep as um, safe as possible. There's some Salvation Army Corps that have barely started up yet. So we're doing really well, aren't we? And we just hope and pray that we'll all keep safe and do our best to keep each other safe as well. But thank you for that lovely contribution. The offering slide will just come up on the screen. You can just have a look at it, give your offering if you like to. You look as though you'd like to play the piano major, so feel free and play away and um, just think about what you're going to give in your offering later as you leave. We're not going to sing it, but we'll let him play it. Thank you. Those that you do, who don't give in the offering by the medium of technology, that which is up there, then just please give your offering in the plate as you leave. And maybe the time will come pretty soon, I think, when we can begin to pass the collection plate again. And it will feel a bit more normal, won't it? But we'll think on that one. The Songs to Brigade are going to sing a lovely song that is really appropriate a song that is entitled, Jesus Will Still Be There. No matter how you're feeling, no matter what you're worried about, Jesus will still be there. Let's listen as the songsters sing to us.
What a beautiful song that is, and an even more beautiful sentiment that Jesus will still be there. I was reminded by my friend on the Alto section that I forgot to say that there is a Christmas fair meeting on Wednesday at one o'clock. We will be holding a Christmas fair this year. It'll seem like you've not done it for years, won't it? But there will be a Christmas fair this year and um, a group of us, well, anybody who's interested. It'd be good if it's not just the craft club, ladies, but come along and um, join with us and help us to plan the Christmas fair on Wednesday at one o'clock. If you all turn up, absolutely fine. We'll find a job for you all to do, I'm sure. So one o'clock on Wednesday, come along and become involved in the events that are going to take place. I absolutely love hospital visiting. That might seem a bit macabre, a bit morose and a bit odd, but I absolutely love hospital visiting. And I was there on um, Thursday afternoon of this week, hospital visiting. And in my time as an officer, I have always been the first one there when anybody from our congregation is in hospital, apart from during COVID times when I wasn't allowed into hospital. I've been on a hospice chaplaincy team. I've been on a head injury unit visitation team. And I love having a good nose around these days at hospital because I'm very much a has-been and things are very different in hospitals these days. I guess it's just something that's in my blood from my past life. And I remember on one occasion I found myself in hospital doing some visiting and I came across a young lady um, sitting at the bed opposite the person I was visiting. And I could tell it was her mother that she was visiting because they looked very similar. And at one point, when I turned my attention away from the person I was with, I could see that this younger lady was crying. So after a little while, um, I plucked up some courage from somewhere and I went over and spoke to her. And it was such a sad, sad story that came out. She was waiting for a care package to be put in place so that she could take her mother home to look after her herself. And to be quite honest, I couldn't see it happening anywhere in the near future, if ever, really. But this younger lady was adamant that this was what she and her mother apparently wanted. She then went on to tell me, and I guess she was probably about 20 years younger than I was at the time. Well, in fact, she'll still be 20 years younger than I am now, <laughs> won't she? I'm sure you sussed that out. But she went on to tell me that she had two children who had special needs. One was already placed at a school that catered for him, and the other was awaiting a place where his needs could be met more favourably. And I asked her how she, was, how she thought she was going to manage when all this happened. And she said, I always do, and I'm used to it. People manage, don't they? And they manage because they have to. And sometimes when you're talking to people, and just in front of me, waiting to go into St. Peter's the other day, there was a younger lady, and she was in absolute floods of tears. But I didn't get to her, but one of the nurses did. But people manage, and they manage because they have to. And I often wonder, how do people manage? How do they manage without Jesus in their lives? How do they manage without that someone to take their anxieties to? To me, it felt as though I was there at the right time that afternoon. If I'd been any later, I would never have met her because she left before I did. And I couldn't really do much in that short time. And I certainly couldn't meet her needs. But I know a man who can. 
as the saying goes. Sadly, I didn't take the opportunity on that afternoon to tell her that, maybe because it didn't seem appropriate. And on reflection, I was given an opportunity and I didn't take it. But I guess that's what happens these days. Sometimes, sadly, we just let those opportunities pass us by. Well, some of us do, and I certainly did on that occasion. Maybe we're not as direct these days as we once were, when we would be out in the street with our bands. Remember those days? We'd be telling people about the God who loves them. But times have changed. And we've had to adapt our methods. And I would like to think that we're still doing pretty well here because we've seen new people begin to attend our worship here in recent weeks. So between us, we must be doing something right or God is doing it through us. All of us will be well aware that the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And we're still aware of that these days as we were years ago, but we're not so bold in how we do it now. Maybe we go down the befriending road, the listening ear road. We find ways to invite people to our places of worship, to our place of worship. And then they too can hear for themselves about the love of God. And hopefully they will see it too in the way that we live our lives. I believe though, and I'm sure you do, that the God I serve is a great big God. He created the world. He flung stars into space. He filled the oceans with water and fish. And out of dirt, he formed man in his own image. And he breathed into him the breath of life. When you look at creation, you expect a great big God could do all that, don't you? But what I want to know is, does he have time for me? Is he a personal God? Could he meet the need of that sad lady who I met that afternoon? Well, I know the answer. And this morning we're going to look at a little insignificant man who had his need met by this great big God in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus was passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem for his royal and triumphal entry into the city. And on his mind was the redemption of the whole world. After all, that was why he had come. And in the previous chapter of Luke's Gospel, Jesus had healed blind Bartimaeus. And then on this occasion, as Jesus arrived in Jericho, Zacchaeus, a tax collector who was very short in stature and rather insignificant to look at. And Peter, I don't ever think you're insignificant. But Zacchaeus wanted desperately to see this man. Zacchaeus's profession had all but alienated him from Jewish society in general and the Jewish religious community in particular. For Zacchaeus to collect taxes for Rome was for him to acknowledge that, he, that they even had a right to do so. And that necessitated this, the tacit admission that Caesar was king and not Yahweh. And to make matters much, much worse, the tax collector's profit came from the extra that they would extract from citizens beyond what they legally owed. And so the tax collector was not only seen as a conspirator and a traitor, but he was also seen as a cheat and a thief. But his problems didn't end with his social ostracism. He was at odds with himself as well, this little man. Life was lonely without friends. And life without vital, intimate relationships is awful. And it's without meaning. And Zacchaeus knew just what it was like to live like that. He knew that he was not who or what he was supposed to be. And Luke in his gospel rarely records names. But in this story he did so to make a point. Because the name Zacchaeus means pure, innocent, just and righteous. 
And yet this man, with that meaning behind his name, had become corrupt, manipulative, despicable, and a tax collector. Those with whom he lived did not see him as pure and just. They saw him as a cutthroat, cheat, an informer, and a traitor. It couldn't get much worse, really, could it? But this day, someone different was coming to town. Zacchaeus had heard that Jesus was a friend of sinners, and he even ate with them. Just for once, this little man wanted to be treated like a human being. He wanted to feel loved and cared for. He wanted to feel respect and friendship coming to him from another person. And don't we all want to feel those emotions? Perhaps this man could give him some warmth. And so in an act of desperation, the outcast decided that he would go to see this friend of sinners. But he faced some obstacles. Being a very short man, he couldn't see over the crowds. And they were certainly not going to make room for him because they didn't like him. He risked mingling with a crowd of people who wanted a chance to get even, to taunt him maybe, to push him out of the way, to kick him or give him a bit of a thick ear. He was really desperate. And since he was too short to see over the crowds, he climbed a tree to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Whatever was going to happen next. Would Jesus walk by unaware that Zacchaeus was there and unintentionally ignore him? Many had overlooked that man before. And there are many human beings who know that feeling all too well. What we so often think or want is often unimportant to everyone but ourselves. Or would Jesus be aware of Zacchaeus's presence in the crowd and um, ignore him intentionally? After all, everyone else was ignoring him on purpose. And perhaps sometimes some of us might know that feeling too. No one would have ever expected what happened next. Jesus stopped under the tree. He looked up and he said, Zacchaeus. Jesus called him by his name. Imagine that. Imagine what it must have felt like. This obviously insignificant person had called, this obviously significant person, had called this little man by name as if they were friends. Or at least they could become friends. And next, Jesus instructed Zacchaeus to come down and he even invited himself for dinner. It was a bit preposterous. It was a bit crazy. But it was wonderful too. Jesus felt he had to just say this, I must stay at your house today. Jesus couldn't redeem the whole world without saving one person. He knew that and calling scoundrels such as Zacchaeus was essential to who he was and why he had come. And that is still true today. He still calls us by name and he invites us sinners to meet with him. Jesus scandalised the pious Jews by accepting the hospitality of a social and religious outcast. He showed that he had courage by boldly and publicly associating with all kinds of people. When it came to the welfare of people, Jesus knew nothing of taboos and protocol. He ate with tax collectors, prostitutes, even really religious types. He ate with them too. Zacchaeus was beside himself that day. Isn't that a funny saying? But we say it. Jesus was beside, Zacchaeus was beside himself. This unique man had spoken to him with acceptance and grace. And he'd offered him warmth and worth. Jesus would become his friend. 
his companion and his saviour. Zacchaeus responded that day with eager and joyful acceptance. And then he did something that maybe we don't dare do. He let the joy and excitement of Jesus' friendship get the best of him. Under the impact of unconditional acceptance, a transformation took place in the value of things. Zacchaeus stood up and he said excitedly, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and those I have cheated I will pay back four times the amount. It was grace that caused Zacchaeus to far exceed the demands that were given by the law. And after Zacchaeus had made the commitment to do this, it was then that Jesus said, Today, salvation has come to this house. Don't let the story end too early, though. It was grace that led to commitment. Jesus' openness to Zacchaeus had the effect of bringing him to a new awareness of himself, his possibilities and his place in life. And that is what salvation is. It's committing yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in the best way that you know how. No more and no less. Zacchaeus accepted God's acceptance of him that day. Augustine apparently, apparently was fond of saying this. He lives each as if there were no other in all the world to love. And he loves all as he loves each. God loves us and he calls us by name. He accepts us. We can't get too horrible, too despicable that God doesn't want us to follow him. We cannot get so outcast that Jesus does not invite us in. We cannot be so lost that he cannot find us. We cannot be such traitors that he cannot ever forgive us. We cannot be such scoundrels that he will not accept us. We cannot be such sinners that he will not come to dinner. That really is good news. So today, what are you waiting for? Just come out of your tree and meet the Saviour because he is seeing you as someone who is totally significant and totally worth saving. And by the grace that Jesus gave to Zacchaeus that day, he came to him. And we're going to sit and watch and listen to another one of my favourite songs that says, His grace still amazes me.
Father, we thank you that you see something in each and every one of us worth saving. We thank you that you see us as significant. We thank you that no matter what we have found ourselves doing in the past, none of it is so bad that we cannot come to you and ask you to forgive us and accept you into our lives. We thank you that you are a God of grace and power, and your grace does indeed amaze each and every one of us. We pray that if there's anyone in our service in our meeting this morning who doesn't know you, that they will maybe ask one of us to explain things to them and to just be clear about the way that they can begin to follow on the road that you have planned for their life. Thank you for being a great and a mighty God and for loving us. Here in answer prayer we pray. Amen. In closing, we're going to turn to song number 922 if you use a book. Now is the time to go forth and tell, O Church of God, awake. And we need to go and tell God's saving news to all the nations take. I invite you to stand and sing together. And some words by way of benediction. O Father, let thy love remain. O Son, may I thy likeness gain. O Spirit, stay to comfort me. O triune God, praise be to thee. Amen. Good morning and God bless you all.